Hola amigos, nos gustan los carpitos. Ura Argentina, 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 Argentina. Capybars in the wild live in various climate zones in the Americas, from North America to South America. In lecture 5, I would like to introduce the current states of the capybara habitat and how the capybars live there. Argentina is one of the AV3 countries representing South America. The ABC countries literally represent South America in terms of land area, economic scale, and advancedness. In Brazil, one of the ABC countries, capybaras are part of everyday life in many parts of the country. There are no capybaras only in Chile, among the ABC countries. Chile is the only country in South America where you can't see wild capybaras. This is because the country is located on the west side along the Andes Mountains, and while the eastern side of the Andes Mountains is warm and humid. The western side of the Andes Mountains, where Chile is located, is relatively dry and has no major rivers. Chile's capital, Santiago, is the largest modern city in South America with a population of over 5.5 million. Surprisingly, Santiago is the second largest capital loving city in the world, after New York among the cities where Oink Sumarisu's followers live in. Japan's summer is uh, 104 degrees Fahrenheit hot, and its winters are very cold and dry like Chile. In other words, Capybaras hate Japanese climate the most in the world. But you can see many capybaras in Japan. So the day may come when you can see a lot of capybaras in Chile too. As always, I apologize for going off topic. Let's go back to Argentina. Argentina is a large country, the eighth largest in the world, with a subtropical climate in the north, a temperate climate with fertile pampas in the center, and a cool boreal climate with glaciers in the south. Argentina also has Aconcagua, the highest peak in South America, at 4.3 miles. Argentina, like Chile and Uruguay in South America, is also famous as a country where whites occupy the majority of the population. After independence from Spain, a unique culture flourished, and the famous tango is also Argentinian music. Messi's success as the World Cup at the end of last year may be fresh in everyone's memory. 
Soccer, tennis, and rugby are also popular in this country. The capital city of Buenos Aires is a representative city of South America with a population of about 15 million people in the metropolitan area, including the surrounding cities. However, Buenos Aires has defaulted on its debt due to years of inflation, and although it was once said to be a glorious country in the past, it is now booming as before, such as seeking a currency union with Brazil. In the suburb of the big city of Buenos Aires, there is a place where many capybaras have recently appeared in the city, and it has become a big problem. No Delta. No Delta is a gated community located about 20 miles northwest of central Buenos Aires. A gated community is an urban design that prevents traffic congestion and improves crime prevention by installing a gate at the entrance of the city and surrounding the city with a road to prevent non-residents from entering. The construction began in the early 2000s on the wetland of the Parana River Basin, one of the tributaries of the La Plata River, the second largest river in South America. At the same time, a nature reserve was built in Pillar, adjacent to No Delta, where a similar community spreads to inform students of the importance of wetland conservation. The wild animals that live there have been active mainly at night to avoid being spotted by humans. However, in the turn of the century, Argentina was hit by several major droughts and animals began to migrate in search of habitat. At that time, the world was slow to spread the COVID, and residents of no Delta were no exception. And due to the lockdown, people could not be seen in the city during the day. No Delta is surrounded by a moat and from near the water's edge to the town. There are grasses cut low so that capybaras can easily eat. Every house in town has a swimming pool, which is real paradise for capybaras who need a daddy bath. However, the drought I mentioned earlier also hit no delta, and during the warmer months, the grass, which needed a lot of water, also withered. After a series of incidents in which dog attacked, including capybaras, and seriously injured by the capybaras, some of the residents asked the community to get rid of the capybaras. The controversy was published in the Guardian magazine in the United Kingdom and the Times in the United States and this controversy became known to the world. Scientists around the world collectively agreed that the potential impact on humans by the original inhabitants was assumed from the outset as humans later moved into capybara habitats. The former Minister of Argentina, National Security, Sabina Frederick, said that the damage done to na nature by real estate projects for the benefit of some people must be compensated by the people who caused the damage. She officially stated it. 
No data can be read are now the center of attention around the world. And the residents have no choice but to be aware of the world's eyes. The caregivers of no dead have fortunately been respected by the will of the world and have begun to walk the path of coexistence with the people in no dead. In the no dead community, first of all, the outer edge of the community, especially near the waterfront, was not cut grass and the capybara hide, and prevented intrusion into human living areas. Several wetlands were also created within the community to replicate their original habitat. I'm really happy that no dirt has begun to move toward coexistence between capybaras and humans. However, I would like everyone to broaden your horizons and think again about the no dirt incident. Thousands of hectares of Brazil's Amazon and other rainforests have been created in recent years to provide more agricultural land for the country's development. As a result, the heavy rain clouds over South America have disappeared and along with rising global temperatures, animal habitats are rooting water and food causing large-scale forest fires. The area around the Ibera wetlands, the second largest in the world, located in the province of Corrientes in northern Argentina, was also hit by severe droughts and fires, and many animals lost their lives and their homes. I couldn't stop crying when I saw capybaras running away from the flames. The picture shows the capybaras who escaped from the big fire and reached the small wave from left behind. The cause of no delta capybaras in Brazil, the residential premise is a withering of the grass and lack of food due to this drought too. In other words, saving the capybaras in the wild depends on the action of each and every one of you living on Earth. The temperature of the air conditioner is 70 degrees Fahrenheit in winter and 80 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. It is no exaggeration to say that if each and every one of you is aware of the environment, it will help save capybaras in the wild. I would like to ask all of you to live your daily lives with a kind heart for the sake of the capybaras. That's all for today's lecture. Thank you for watching. Capybaras of the world we now introduce United States, Panama, Brazil and how to exhibit wonderful foods that match the characteristics of capybaras. This is brought by President Oink Simaris of Capybara Land. <coughs> With some next smile, capybaras rule. Bye bye.